This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento. Today we are joined by Anthony Canella, member of the California State Senate, and it's not very often that the governor calls a special session, but he has called one. In fact, he's called two. But let's talk about one of the special sessions, which focuses upon transportation. Sir, you know our roads, our bridges, metaphorically speaking, are in serious disrepair. How bad is it? Oh, it's really bad. I mean, mm. it's it's uh, it's in the multi billions of dollars right. to to fix this. And in fact, the average driver incurs about seven hundred dollars a year in maintenance costs in their vehicles because it's so bad. So mm. it's 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 time that we pay attention to it because we've got real issues. What do you make of the fact that we are dealing with this issue as part of a special session? Is it a special issue that needs yeah. special attention? Well, it's it's kind of a mixed bag. I think it's important. I think it reaches the level that it's important enough to talk mm. about a special session. I wish we would have talked about it as part of the budget, mm. because the budget we had, you know, fourteen billion dollars in unanticipated uh, revenue. Right. We could have put some of that towards transportation, but we didn't, and so now it's outside the purview of the budget. It's going to be a standalone subject. So uh, it's it's a positive and negative. I would say. Let's talk about how road repairs are funded. As I understand it, a significant amount of road repairs and their funding sources comes from the gas tax. Now, there are two elements of the gas tax that are working, arguably, against the road fund. One, we have not raised a gas tax in decades. And two, the good thing about green vehicles is we use less gas, but that means we take in less money because there's less gas being purchased. Yeah, that's a, that's a serious problem. When I bought my first car back in 1987, I probably got eight miles to the You're gallon. Right. The car I drive today gets about 36 miles exactly. to the gallon. I think we're all moving towards uh, more fuel efficient cars. Also, we have the zero emission vehicles, right. electric vehicles, hybrids. And, and the zero emission vehicles, actually, they don't use gasoline. So they At all. Zero. For, even though they use our roads, they pay zero. So that's that's not equitable. So let's talk about that. You know, on the one hand, we try to incentivize the acquisition of low emission vehicles, zero emission vehicles. The flip side, though, is should we be putting some type of fee on these folks since they are using our roads and they are paying zero, like you said? I believe that we should. In mm. fact, if you look at the folks that are buying the zero emission vehicles, they're usually the the wealthier individuals. Okay. It's not, you know, the middle class folks in my district buying zero emission vehicles. Right. So they get the benefit of not paying gas taxes, but they also get to use the, the carpool lanes. And and I'm fine with that. I understand the rationale to try right. to move these electric vehicles. But look, road maintenance is everybody's responsibility. And so they certainly should be part of the equation when we're talking about additional revenue. But what about the conflicting signal that sends? Because I don't think as we speak today, there are rebates for low or zero emission vehicles, but if there aren't, there had been very recently. So isn't that kind of a double message? Well, I guess, but you know, I think, look, <laughs> right. a lot of people hopefully are buying zero emission vehicles because right. they care about the environment. And gasoline prices are gonna continue to go up. And there's, so there's a lot of reasons to get zero emission vehicles, but look, it's everybody's responsibility. Right. It shouldn't be the, the lower middle class individual that has to drive a 1978 right. Datsun that should take on all the responsibility of road maintenance. It should be everybody's responsibility. And I would argue folks that are buying $100,000 Teslas right. can afford to pay a little bit of money to maintain roads. So let's focus on just that one element, taxing those that buy zero emission vehicles. I believe that would require a two-thirds vote. And I believe that I'm probably speaking to the only Republican <laughs> that would vote for that, or am I wrong? I mean, could it be part of a, a package where some of your Republican colleagues would support an increase in taxes on this one specific issue? Well, look, uh, increasing taxes is difficult, right. especially again, we just adopted a budget that had $14 billion in unanticipated revenue. So, so I can understand both sides of it, but the problem is we do need additional revenue. We have a large right. revenue shortfall when we're talking about road maintenance. And, you know, because of, you know, Prop 98 and, and right. Prop 2, the rainy day fund, there's yes. only so much additional money that can go to these other projects. So uh, I can't speak for my colleagues. I'm, I'm willing to look at additional revenue. Now, there's got to be some things done in order to do that. Number one, we've got to return all transportation money that's currently collected and put that back towards roads. For example, the weight fees. Truckers pay a weight fee. They spend a billion dollars a year on that. That has gotten diverted to pay off debt. In addition, we've got to have the Senate caucus has mm -hmm. introduced SCA 7, right. which is a constitutional amendment that would require all transportation funding to be guaranteed for that purpose. So if we can do those two things, and then, then I'm willing to talk about some of these other things, mm -hmm. but not until we do those two. What do your friends on the Democratic side say about SCA 7? 
forcing all transportation funds to go yeah. to transportation. I, I think that uh, the folks have I ta I've talked to have right. been open to it. I mean, okay. they, they certainly drive on these same roads as well. Right, sure. Right? And if we're investing in, in transportation, we're investing in, in, right. uh, uh, investing in, in great jobs. We're investing in our economy. Sure. If we don't have a transportation system that works, all these other things don't work. So I think they're open to it, but I think the bigger angst is on taking back that weight fee and, and putting mm. it towards trans transportation in general because there's a lot of folks that care about, you know, in-home support services or education. Sure. And they're afraid that if that money is diverted, that's money taken out of those projects. But, you know, we've, we, I think we can do it all. I think we can have the right balance. What about more generally increasing the gas tax? not just looking at those that have low or no emission mm -hmm. vehicles. What's your sense of that possibility? I think that's a definite discussion. I think you know, increasing the gas tax, increasing diesel tax, a user fee for, for, for cars. Right. I mean, we've got, again, we have such a problem, and, and every year we wait, it gets worse and worse, right. to the point where it's, it's not a, a, a linear problem, it's an no, exponential it problem. It, it, it builds up very quickly, so I think everything's on the table. But at the same time, as you know, as part of cap and trade, in on January 1st of this year, we saw gas taxes arguably increase. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's so much a gas tax, but the cost of gas went up because of cap and trade. Right. Now, it didn't go up as much as many people said it would. I mean, I understand it went up maybe 10 cents a gallon as opposed to 70 cents a gallon, but is now the right time to look at that? Well, that, that's a great argument, and that, that is a gas tax. Uh -huh. now, fuels are under the cap under the cap and trade, right? So, and it has gone up a lot. Just in the same breath, you know, oil has gone down, and so has, the impact right. isn't as bad as we, as it could be. But you know, that, that that brings up a good discussion though, because part of that cap and trade dollar should go towards transportation as well. Ah. So when I talk about transportation, yes. I talk more. You know, Senator Bell has it's a maintenance component. We also need new capacity, but I also want mass transit. Mass transit has got to be part of the discussion. When we're talking about reducing our dependency on oil or, or lowering uh, greenhouse gas emissions, mass transit has got to be part of that. And let's talk about cap and trade, because as you know, the majority party decided in consultation with the governor to postpone the discussion on how to spend cap and trade dollars. Because while, I don't know, 50, 60 percent is dedicated to bullet train and affordable housing, there's about 40 percent that's not. And as a result, about a billion bucks is going to be raised through cap and trade at the end of this year that could be used for... Yeah, could be used, well, for transportation right. projects. And so that all that money has been allocated. Uh, a lot of us would argue not in a way that it should be. For example, I, I'm a big advocate of affordable housing. Right. A lot of people in my district can't afford houses. Right. But is cap and trade really make sense to build affordable mm. housing? That should be through some other pocket. This should really be about reducing greenhouse gases. Mm. If that's the purpose of cap and trade, that's what we should be doing. So we should be building, you know, retrofitting tractor trailers, uh, building mm. mass transit, fixing our roads. Because if you're stuck in traffic, you're emitting a lot of greenhouse gases. It makes no sense. So that money, uh, some of that money needs, needs to be diverted over to transportation projects before we ask hardworking Californians to pay additional money. So, so it's going to be a very interesting special session. What about what's been adopted in Europe, for example, these user fees, where they look at your odometer and see how much you've driven and tax yeah. based upon that usage? So vehicle miles traveled, VMT, mm -hmm. and we uh, commissioned a study in the legislature last year. And that really can't come, come online until I think 2018 because mm -hmm. we're going to study it. And there are a lot of problems with that. Number one is the privacy aspect. Right. You know, do we really want government knowing where we go all the time? Number two is the fairness issue. If you've got folks right. that live in a rural district that have to just drive a long way to, to go to work or go right. to school. So, so we've got to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. And so what Senator Bell is talking about, and I agree with him on this area, is this is really a bridge between now when we've got a, a very serious need and then when there may be a new way of determining I transportation uh, costs. But that's going to be some time, and we've got to bridge that gap until then. His name is Anthony Canella. He is a member of the California State Senate, representing beautiful portions of the Central Valley. My name is Brad Palmer, and we are coming to you from the uh, state's capital in Sacramento, California. We thank you for joining us on Local Issue.